Okay, so in this lesson we're going to look at uh, the while loop, uh, which is just uh, another version really uh, that C programming has for doing things repetitively. As I say, the for loop is normally used in situations where we know how many times it's going to run, uh, and the while loop tends to be used in situations where we're, we're maybe not sure. That said, I'm going to show in this particular case uh, the exact same, the while loop being used for the exact same purpose as the for loop was previously used. So, what occurs is that uh, <coughs> the three pieces of information that are in the for loop are distributed differently in the while loop. It's only the test that occurs within the brackets of the while loop. So I'm going to change this firstly to while. Uh, you can see it's come up in bold there because it's a, a keyword. The i equals zero, that section there, must come out and must happen sometime before the while loop if it's going to happen at all. Uh, so it comes, sorry, I've done that wrong. And this bit here, um, so we, we don't have any semicolons inside in the brackets in this case, so this bit here, i++, plus plus, um, it goes here. Okay. Now, um, and that's basically the, the while loop. So we have initialization happens sometime before the while loop, then within the within the while loop uh, we have the test, um, and then within the body of the while loop is where we must do our increment. If we forget to put uh, this part in here, what will occur is again uh, the value of i will never change, uh, so the test will remain true every time, and uh, the program will, that while loop will effectively run forever and will hang your computer until you can actually stop it. So uh, just to run that till you see that it works in the exact same way, and you can see that our uh, our hexadecimal numbers have come out uh, in each case. Now one thing I didn't show you in the for loop, although I mentioned it, was how would we go up by a different value each time. So uh, I'll do that here, uh, where we'll go up in value to two. Uh, so as, uh, I plus two. And that means that every time we run the loop, um, the i value will get incremented by 2. So what happens is we come to the while loop and we say, well, is i smaller than 16? Yes, it is. It's currently 0. So we'll print out the information here with the i values of 0 as it happens. And then we come down to this line and we increase i by a value of 2. So instead of 0, it now becomes 2. And we finish our loop and come back up to here to do the test again. And uh, this time i is a value of 2, is that smaller than 16? Well it certainly is, so that's true again. And we come down to do our printf, and we print out that now with the values of 2 in each case. Then we come and we increase our value of i by another 2, so that becomes 4, and back around again to do the test. So again i is 4 now, but it's still smaller than 16, so we run our loop again and so on. And that can continue up until i is a value of 14. Uh, which is smaller than 16, so it'll run, and then it'll get increased by 2 until it becomes 16, and this time we'll come around and say, well, while i is smaller than 16, i is now a value of 16, so 16 is not smaller than 16, and therefore it's not true anymore. And once it's not true, we hop straight to here and we finish our program. So what we should see in this case is the printf being run uh, for every second value of i, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, uh, all the way up to 14, and um, we run that and we see that up as far as 14, 0 up to 14 and all even numbers. If we wanted it to happen on odd numbers what we could do is we could set i to a value of 1 as our initialization and give it a whirl and now we see 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13 and 15 and of course you can go up in values of 3 if you like uh, if that suits uh, your application and we can see 1, 4, 7, 10, 13 it doesn't go any further than that because 13 plus 3 is 16 and that would just make the thing untrue. Okay? And if I just for the for the sake of it change that to 17 um, give that a spin. We see now that it goes uh, 1, 4, 7, 10, 13 and then to 16. You'll notice an unusual thing here, it says 16 is, is the same as 10. That's actually one zero in hex, uh, so important to realize that that's, uh, that's not the decimal 10, it's uh, hexadecimal 10, um, which of course could be confusing if you, weren't, uh, if you weren't quite ready for it, that you didn't know what it was doing. So sometimes it's maybe not a, a bad idea to push uh, zero x in front of it or something like that to denote the fact that it's going to come out as a hexadecimal number, so that you now know what's hexadecimal that you're dealing with. Okay. Uh, so
so that's that's the while loop. Uh, what often happens is that some test uh, is put in here, like uh, while i is not equal to some value, um, and perhaps uh, you're you're waiting for an input. Like so, you you could have something where you had a scan f with inside in this, and you were asking the user to put in uh, numbers. Let's say it was exam results or something like that, and you might have while i is not um, while i is larger let's say than uh, than zero okay uh, you could run something like this where you're putting in exam results and then when you want to stop you put in a minus one and that obviously would be smaller than zero which um, would then actually cause the thing to stop in other words that you were finished entering your exam results so you could you could do things like that where uh, you don't know how many times the person is going to enter an exam result but once the person wants to stop they have some number that they can put in there in order to stop the thing from running but that's a slightly more advanced topic I just want to show you the very simple uh, while loop for the moment so that's the, the, the while loop in its simplest form